Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today we have... Carson. And we're going to be watching some interesting worms with you guys today. He is the first offensive lineman that we're getting to this season. A third-year junior out of Iowa, listed unofficially at this time before the combine, at 6'5", 320. Uh, so, one thing to keep in mind is that Alaric Jackson did injure his knee in week one. So, we are watching this prior to week two. I don't know if they're going to move him to the other side for the next month or so while Jackson recovers. But if he does, we may end up revisiting his left tackle tape later on this year as well. But that is their, that is their plan. They're going to move worse over to left tackle. Sweet. So then we may end up doing another one uh, at around combine time after we get all that stuff updated again later this year. But for now, we're going to be watching what he can do on the right side of the line uh, in 2018 with one game and his first game of 2019 versus Miami. So uh, what game of 2018 or 2017, if you want to go that far back, do you want to start with? Penn State? Uh, let's see. Mississippi State? At Mississippi State, they had a lot of talent on that D line. And before we start, you said that you hadn't watched any of his before. No, I have not seen him at all. So we are both going into this pretty fresh, which is my preferred way of doing this. And he will be. Oh, this is the bowl game, of course. Mississippi State is a. SEC team, and he will be number, oh, this is just offensive line tape, okay, so he will, 74, be... okay, so, but he should be predominantly right tackle at this game too, right? Yeah. Oh, someone got pulled up. It was worse on the ground there. Oh, yeah, okay, so... This should be him here. And he just got thrown down. Yikes. Maybe maybe Hawkinson stepped on his foot. I can't really tell from this from the normal TV camera. So, the defense of lineman he's going up against, which is number 9, I'm pretty sure that's Montez Sweat, I can't remember. Yeah, Sweat was 9. Yeah, so he's lined up against Montez Sweat the first couple plays, and he seems to be trying actively to disengage. Worf is doing a pretty decent job of keeping him in front of him, at least. It was a pretty smooth kid step there. He kind of turned too quickly. Would have opened up the outside if uh, the, the chip wasn't there. Nice shot picking up the stunt. See, so turns again a little too early. It's opening up the outside right now. Overall, I do kind of, um, as I watch more and more offensive line tape, I am getting more and more used to this whole uh, forcing guys around the QB thing. So I do kind of like that in theory. Yeah, there's, but there's a difference between forcing him around the QB and like opening up the outside and then trying to recover, which is what Worst was did on that that play. That was just completely blown the whole way through. But I think the right. Guard 61 forgot to come off his guy. I don't know. Nice seal. A lot of outside runs right after Iowa. Oh, he just went right past his guy. He looks a little reckless right now. I mean, he's having a hard time staying controlled. See, there, there, he turns a little soon again. I mean, he was in, he makes the block, but. That's like, that's dangerous territory right there. 
see like right now he's facing right up that line and you're see the one thing with like a camera is your butt should be like a camera it should be pointing at the quarterback i know you don't always know exactly where the quarterback is but you should have a feel for it and right now he is straight up that line and yes montez i mean he can easily bend that edge and get an easy shot and you would think that for as deep a drop as I'm pretty sure that's Nate Stanley also, as deep a drop as Stanley took here, or whoever Iowa's quarterback is this game, you yeah, would think Stanley. that he would be moving a little bit further back, right? That is a very deep drop, but also at this point, Stanley could climb the pocket. I mean, that there is room there. Oh, but, of course, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's, still, that's a very deep, that's very deep. I mean, caught that, let's see, it's like, that's at least like five yards right there. And you already started that five yards back. That's, yeah, you know, good 10 yards by the line. And, yeah, at this point, oh, he should really climb the pocket for sure. But, yeah, that is a lot of ground for him to cover against an athlete like Montez. Oh, man, again. Oof. Not a good start for him. To be fair, that is an overload blitz, but, like... But at that point, I'd rather see him take Simmons right there once the right guard gets beat, because he's the most dangerous guy. Here, right? guy. 94, yeah. yeah. That's the most That's the most dangerous guy to the quarterbacks. So I'd rather see him take him instead of trying to run sweat up the field. That's exactly what I was about to say, too. It, I mean, if you wanted to take out the second guy, but once that guy gets beat, you need to switch. To be fair, I kind of like the motor, even if he doesn't do anything the rest of the play. He's pretty quick, and pretty quick off the ball, I'll give him that, but yeah, he's he's struggling right now. I mean, he's just out of control, he's just not very technical, technically sound right now. And so he just put on the ground That's there, insane. it's just, he's playing kind of high, he, did, he allows people into his chest, he's not getting good extension with his hands. It's just he's allowing people into his chest. And... and even the start of this play, like, I just paused this almost as soon as the play started, and he's already beat. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I don't on. know what this is. I mean, cause he, because it's an outside run, which they run a ton of. Jeez. But what goes in with his left shoulder instead of trying to attack the defenders outside shoulder and poke him. He goes in with the left shoulder and then just kind of gives up as soon as he gets beat inside. That looked all right. Though he got the ball out quick, too. Same thing. That looked much better. Oh, what a play. But overall, like the even if he did get this out quick, he still looks much better. Because he forces Montez to kinda counter that inside. See here again with the turning too soon. He's Just, straight down. He, he, he's only like, let's see, about four yards, four or five yards behind the line, and he's already facing at a ninety degree angle. That's that's not what that's what not what you need to do. You need to be you still need to be square at least four yards yards into your drop and then work off the defender he's turning just super quickly and look it opened up to it opened up a lane right to the quarterback as soon as he starts to roll out a little bit that defender goes right into the quarterback and that's not something that should be designed right no that's definitely not a design i just i you're gonna get your quarterback killed if you if that's the goal same thing here. And it's not as big of a deal, at least, because he has kind of... Sweat is also kind of straight. Yeah, but then he gets 
thrown off his feet here. The the base is just not good, and he's just he's not doesn't have good hand placement right now. Because that that was a weak attempt at a punch on that on that drop where he gets thrown off the ground. He kind of doesn't even get into his chest. He just kind of throws his hands, and it's just gets lifted off the ground. The base isn't good right now, and just neither are the drops. He still got kind of pushed into the pocket a little bit. Stanley was a little bit off center. Even then, he was the only guy that wasn't able to hold the line. He's just moved back a yard or two. And that's not even Simmons either. See there. It's elevated off the ground again. I mean, it's... now is it that he's starting high, or is it that he's high when he engages? That's more the issue. On that last fight, well, this where he gets thrown off the ground there by sweat. Yeah, see, like look where he, look where he is right now. His his shoulder pads are above the defensive lineman's pads. He's trying to punch up near the shoulders. And anytime you do that, you're going to get killed as an offensive lineman. So you're saying it's more the hand placement more than the actual pad level? I would say pad level. Okay. But, but also, part of that pad level problem is where you're punching. Because the higher you try to punch, the higher your pads are, and it more exposes your chest, which defenders can get into and drive you up off the ground. But that one... Th the kick set on that play wasn't bad, but then it's just a very weak attempt at a punch, and just he's very high. He, he did his eye on the ground there, but even I didn't like that one because he had help from the right guard, and it's just it was kind of weird. He's very reckless. And there, you got to pick up number six. You got to see him. As soon as he starts taking off right there, you got to be looking for it. You got to try to do something. And then he sees it. I know it's, pro it's probably too late for him to get there, but once he sees it, he just kind of stands there. Because right now he's engaged, but then he's looking for that other backer to see if he's coming, but you got to look back and see him. And then as soon as he starts taking off, he does look back and see him, but then just he's, he can't get there, obviously, at that point. But then I would at least really that guy. It was these two. I get. What I would you're like. Saying. Yeah, I would like to see you at least try to get there once you see once you see it. Come on. Come on. I don't know if they didn't look all that. <laughs> like the stunt, he just follows the stunt guy. He doesn't bother to pick up twenty four. And know, he never got. He, he never even got in front of him either. He's just trying to wash him down the line. If that center wasn't there. It could have been, could have been a potential sack. Didn't knock, yeah. knock this guy down. Yeah, he, he didn't get Simmons on the ground there either. Okay, there again. It's just the punch. When he's in good position that time, which is, hasn't happened very often this day, but it's the punch was very weird. Like if you. If you really see the when he goes in the very first punch when uh, Sweat gets to the or whoever that is gets to the outside, it's not. You need to have your thumbs up and get right into the chest. He almost did kind of like a circular thing, punch and try to get to the outside shoulder for some reason, and it's just easy swat for number five. He recovered pretty nicely there, but that, that was a very bad punch, very first, very bad first punch there. That was better. He's still turning way too soon. Because he was almost, he was flat. Look, and he's barely he's into his kitchen. Beyond and flat he's, at this point. Yeah. He's almost angled in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just not, he's not doing a good job right now past that. It's very, very technically poor, I guess. I didn't like all that. He looks, a, he looks a little on the lazy side, too. Yeah. 
<laughs> See, like, like what, like what is that? I mean, I mean, he's the the kick set is decent. It's it covers. He literally only covers like two yards, which is not good. But but he starts. Look, play, he's not. He's, and he's flat. He is three yards behind the line of scrimmage, and he's at a ninety degree angle to the sideline. Like. I don't know what how you expect to make that block, especially on someone like Montez Sweat. And then, again, it's the very bad first punch, which opens up to him turning and Sweat to the outside. If you would, even though he didn't cover yards with the tit set, if he was, had a good first punch, he'd be able to at least stone Sweat for a little bit and be able to mirror him. But that's Sweat is just a very simple, get the hands off, and then boom, he's to the outside. He's not putting up much of a fight at all right now. And at this point in the play, he's already past B. Kind of forces him away with help. This guy's supposed to go first round? Uh, I've seen anywhere from like top 20 to top 30, yeah. Oof, that's... I know this is this is the first time I watched him. It might just be a bad game, but this is like Colton Miller level bad. So he's not the edge guy. The edge guy in this play is Hawk, who gets beat. Oh my God! I don't know what he's trying to cut there. <laughs> he literally just he just dropped straight down and. <laughs> He's that not was, even looking at anything. That was... I I was so mad about Devin Bush getting cut blocks anything at level times last year. That cut block wouldn't have even knocked Devin Bush off his feet. Oh, I backed up two plays. It's my fault. I think it looks he's like he's to, doing an up down. I think he's trying to cut this guy, but they're running a stunt. And he just cuts way too soon. He should have been way more patient and just let the guy come across and then underneath and then Well then even on a stunt the cut's not gonna work anytime, even if you are patient, because then the point is cutless at that or pointless at that point because the guy coming to the outside, there's no point in cutting him, just seal just seal the edge. And oh, then my, the guard my, pick up pick up the stunt guy for it. Yeah, my point would have been, like, this guy's coming outside, so what I want him to do is I would want him to come around and then try and cut him down, but, yeah. I mean, part of that can be blamed on play calling, but at some point you had to execute, too. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd hope that was coming from the sideline and not just him being an idiot and dropping to a knee. And then oh. even on that last play, even on that last play, it just allows the guy into his chest. It doesn't have any sort of punch. So here, I don't know if they're actually going to call it, but it does look like he false starts. Because see, he jumped at this point already and the ball's not snapped. Oh yeah, he moved early. I don't know if they actually caught him for it. No, they didn't. Oh, man. That's terrible. I mean, look how high he is when Simmons gets into his chest. Okay, so he's decent here. And then by the time Simmons makes contact, he is standing straight up. And has he doesn't even have his right foot in the ground. And then, boom, of course, right to the quarterback. It should have been a hold, too. That was a hold. Um, even I can tell by that blocking steam, his job is to protect B-cap and extend, and extend the gap. And he does not do a good job there either. He gets beat inside and just has to wash down. If that, if that uh, turns out to be a run play, running back to stuff behind the line. He's athletic. I mean, he missed the block, but... He actually does show a bit of athleticism, which is probably why he's getting as much hype as he is based on this tape. Uh, 
Okay, where was he on this play? Because that was not him way out there. Oh yeah, that was that wasn't him. He's gonna be up here on the line, I think. I don't see him anywhere. No, he's back outside, so he's probably just up on the line. And I mean Oh that okay, yeah, I see what happened on that last play where we saw the right guard hit saw the guy blitzing or that might have been the left guard and then picked him up. Yeah, it was just something. So, here we are, third and eleven. I, is is he supposed to protect the corner blitz at this point? Is that what he's doing? Third, let's see here. Uh, it looks like I don't know what the plan is there because usually you don't worry about the corner in that sort of in that sort of alignment. I mean, I, I know he sees him coming, but. He, his pass set looks like it's straight for a corner, and usually that's not something you would worry about. It just happens that sweat runs right into where he was placed, even though he, he's still too he still turned way too early. Again, he's like and he's, he's like too four, hard back, honestly, to me. At four, that point. He's like he gets like four yards behind the line of scrimmage, and he's at a ninety degree angle, and sweat beats him right to the outside and gets right to the quarterback. Oh, you're better ahead of me. I don't know if you can tell that. Are you watching it separate than the screen? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. One second down. I, I still don't want that play either because he still gets to a 90 degree angle and then has to recover. Um, he actually didn't recover. It's just the ball was out quick. So what happened on the third and ten play? 11-16 in the fourth. Let's see. Um, it's kind of hard to pin, pin him out. Okay. Yeah. It's a run. He's, they're run blocking. It, well, it looks like it's supposed to be a double team with, the, with 69. 69 leaves a little too early for that backer and puts Worfs in a bad position where he starts to wa start washing down. That's the, it might look like Worfs gets beat there to a lot of people, but I would put that more on 69. He leaves that double team too soon. Okay. Well, uh, actually, I don't know. War well, 69 is that left guard, I think. Does anyone well, know where 69 was the center. Oh, yeah, he is the center. Yeah, maybe that wasn't a double team. Maybe he just did a drop beat. I don't know. On this next play, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, Hawkinson. Yeah, I remember that play. Oh, I'm talking about worse, first off. Uh, oh, I, was, I just remember that play from Hawkinson breakdown last year. But, I mean, like, we see where worse is, right? Let's, let's see. That's awful. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, that's I, just... Yeah, that's not not good. Yeah, I'm starting to be okay. I'm I'm starting to be very nitpicky because he gets back there, makes his block, but again, he's he's still too he's turned too quickly for my liking. Next play at the end, he gets beat. Yeah, he's got to sink the hips, take the head out of it, and got too far to lean forward, and it led to the easy shed for that end. Again, like... Which player are you at? He, this one, here. This, it's, He's in front of the guy... He sort of makes the block, yeah. This play right here, first and ten. But you have it paused at a very good spot here. The dot, the def oh, that's maybe a little farther back, but the defender gets into his chest before he gets his, into the defender's chest. And so when you when he makes contact here, he gets his head. You see his head get thrown back, and he has to kind of, he takes a couple of hops back to try to recover, and that it opens up. The, 
the adapter between him and the rest of the line, which opens up a lane for that defender to get back in with the play running B gap, and he gets a hand in the tackle. Actually, yeah, that's why it makes the he's the man one making the tackle there. See here, boom. See, sweats in his chest, and as you go, his head will throw back, get thrown back, and he has to take a couple hop steps to get his balance back. See, a couple hop steps, and it opens up the gap between him and the rest of the line. With that rondo and B gap, sweat can just boom, gets sheds right back inside and makes the play. What happened there? I get that he was supposed to move down, but but that's see that's what I was talking about earlier. He just looks a little lazy at times. Like what? Do you, like hit somebody? I it looks like a they're blocking an outside like stretch to the left, and it doesn't look like there's anybody there for him to hit. But do something. He just leaves the guy on the edge wide open. Montez again. And this play here turns way too soon. It's, yeah, this is, that was terrible. That might be some of the worst offensive line tape I've ever seen since scouting. Oh, my God. It's not very long. I've only been scouting since maybe three or four years, but still terrible. So, uh... Mr. Game did just suspension. And the other. Arrested for OWI? Okay. No, oh, Andy has off the field problems. This guy is great. I mean, at least he's a good weight room guy. So he's and probably going to test state, well. State champion wrestler, but still. Interesting. Okay, you ready to move on to Miami, Ohio? Sure. See if we can see any improvement over the last eight months. I would hope so. It's hard to get worse than that. Okay. Same thing. Right yep, not hit, not hitting anybody. Like, was he double teaming the the defensive tackle and leaving the end open? The goal here, it looks like, his job is to get inside of that end, which he does. Well, uh, to me, I think, honestly, it looks like he's supposed to double team the tackle. Which I think that also might was the design with the and then the but the tackle slants inside, which means you should be climbing for a linebacker at this point, like that oh. that one right right there in front of him. But yeah, he just keeps running down the line or jogging. But he gets inside of the guy like he's supposed to. But see, like number whatever number that is, three, it looks like. I he should turn and hit him. And three gets close to chasing down the play. Instead of instead, because what is that little hit on the ribs at the very end of that tackle does nothing to affect the play. If he turns up and hits that linebacker number three, it maybe slows him down and doesn't he doesn't get anywhere near the play. Nice play was all right. That was a nice block. And there we go. That was a good double team. Very solid right there. Competition is a lot easier this game, so I'd hope this. Oh, there we go. That's, that's another nice spot. Okay. There, there we go. This is starting stuff I like to see. But again, it is Miami of Ohio, so. Nice play. He does a pretty decent job of staying in gold at least. At 12 on yeah. first. It, it, it works because of the short drop. If it's. If it's a long drop, then he gets beat around. He gets opens up the inside and he has to hit. And the next play he opens like a little that. too late, honestly. He stays almost a little too uh straight. 
and then he angles a little late once he gets speed to the outside. It looks like he's going to hug the guy. Like, what is your plan here? Okay. That was interesting, the third down play. <laughs> okay. Same thing on the fourth down play. It's, he's still he's doing a pretty good job of once he gets he's see like he's still angled a little too much. He's and he did it. He it was ninety degrees, like a whole yard ahead. He did a nice job of shuffling in front, but he's just making stuff a lot harder for himself. If he takes the extra step on the kick step, back that extra yard, and then do a little slide step out. Then, then you can stay square and get in front of them instead of having to make contact and shuffle to get in front of them. It's just, he's just making stuff harder for him. He's making the bots, but he's making it so harder. Like, see, like that. He was 90 degrees and then shuffled a good four yards. Take that extra kit step back another one or two yards, and it's just so much easier. So this is Miami of Ohio, and he just ended up on the ground. Oh, okay, and again, second straight play. He literally missed the block and spun himself to the ground. Play up in the catch. That play didn't look too bad. He got inside and forced him out. It took him a little while, but. Second down play didn't look all that bad either. And then here we are on third and four at 450, and he moves to the left side. So this must have been the play before where Alara Jackson got injured. That 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 pass on set. Oh, I'm watching the wrong play. <laughs> that pass set was not good. He doesn't cover any ground whatsoever. He just kind of hops in place. And then he, I mean, makes the block, but he has to like run for it instead of just doing takes that and doing that. Okay. That was solid. Now, he still, out. he still let the guy into his chest. They kind of got off balance a little bit, but he recovered with because he's was stronger than the my real high guy, and it ended up being okay. Quick fade. Okay, a little bit more uh, intensity there, for better or worse. Well, he ended up getting inside of the guy he was supposed to block. He just never really blocked him. He just kind of yeah. shielded him, which is, which is Fun. which is okay. Yeah, I mean, but at that point, because at really. Towards once he gets towards the numbers, um, maybe a little before the numbers, but he has them like not right quite yet. I mean, he, he's in front of them, but maybe like the very next step, I would like to see get his hips around and seal at that point. He yeah. uses it once you're once you have enough to shield, that's when you should be able to be able to flip the hips and seal. Cut this guy outside. That's a solid kick step. And then turn, but he still turns a little too soon and 
has to rely on the shuffle to get back in front. That play looked a little bit better in terms of the angle, at least. The angle was good there. Still, I would like to see more depth covered on the kick. He's, like, to get three yards, he's taken like six or seven steps. Yeah. Okay, nice uh, pull, kind of. That was a good job mirroring the end there and just keeping driving. That was solid. Again, no depth on the kick. It's, it's, it's driving me crazy. And then still, and then as you watch the play longer, he gets lazy and kind of stops his feet and turns. See that he's already starting to turn, thinks the play, and then boom. And then he leads an alley right to the quarterback. At some point, though, like... At some point, it's on the quarterback to yeah. the block for so long. I agree with that. But if you don't turn, then he's, you're fine there. Because if you stay square to, with him and block like you normally would, when he rolls out, the end will take off. But you you could be able to still make the block. as Once you turn, you're, you're done there, especially if he's rolling out to that side. That wasn't there for a screen block. That, he just popped straight up. He didn't. There was no movement with his feet there. He just, just popped right out of his stance. You, can, you, definitely, you definitely see the athleticism, and you see the strength. So there's definitely potential there. But... He needs a lot of coaching in the NFL. Like, like I'm talking so much coaching, like where he sits on the bench for two years before he even touches the field. Because as as a lineman, you can have all you can have all the athleticism and strength in the world. That only gets you so far. I mean, you have to be able to know what, how to get make the blocks, how to be technically where you get enough yards in depth, don't turn so early. Because if he does this type of stuff in the NFL, his quarterback will be killed. Yeah. And I think that a perfect example of this, now I'm not going to go all the way with the comparison of this yet, but I think a one of those guys that kind of proves that point about the athleticism being not everything is Eric Flowers, right? Ooh. We saw him go top 10, was it, to the Giants? Yep. And then he didn't get hardly any coaching, which didn't exactly help either. Uh, but he just, he had the athletic ability, and it never really turned out to be anything. I do like the second play here. Second level play. Then the second quarter. Now, one thing I will say, and I don't know if you've been noticing this, is he does seem to be doing a little... Now, of course, some of this is probably natural improvement from year to year. He does seem to be doing a little bit better on the left side. Do you think that that's been true? Yeah, I actually do. Yeah, he has looked a little bit more solid on the left, especially in run blocking. And I think that part of the footwork thing can be fixed when you're more naturally used to playing that side. If a month from now we see he's four or five games in, he's adjusted to the footwork aspect of playing on the left side instead of the right, maybe there's a little bit more to him playing left tackle than there is right. He's pretty quick out of the stance. It's not... Yeah, he, he's quick out of the stance. Like, that's a nice job getting on the inside kind of sealing him. But it's just, yeah, his, te his technical aspect of it is not very good. He, he struggles to hold the blocks and just puts himself in a bad position. But he is pretty quick, and the athleticism shows, and he's strong. So he'll, get, he'll definitely get overdrafted compared to what the film says because – NFL teams all of that type of stuff, especially from, all, from the big guys. If you're quick, strong, that was decent. You're gonna go. 
you're going to go high, even if the tape isn't great. See Colton Miller. Won a good, solid three rounds ahead of where he should have. So I don't know where you're at. I'm, I'm going to assume that you're watching this until I say otherwise, but are you at the play at 11.31 in the third? Yeah. That didn't look that bad. Yeah, it was solid. I mean, he a stand that t- popped. He popped straight out of the stance on that play, and then allows the defender in his chest to kind of pop back, but he does a nice job anchoring down. I think that's play. He almost gets thrown to the ground. He's back on the right side. Okay. Actually this, got, got, got the guy on the ground this time. Yeah. Improvement. He, 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 he almost missed him again. Barely got the foot, but got him on the ground. Now he's back on the again. left again. Yeah. That was okay. a good block. Opened up the uh, ran ran right behind his butt. That was... That was nice. And Back on the right, I think. I, I didn't see him at all that play. Yeah, he's back on the right tackle uh, inside the tight end. Okay. Right here. So the tight end is on the very end, and then he's right tackle. Yeah. yeah. He's the guy that ends up on the ground. Yeah. Though that may have been pancake more than actually ended yeah. up on the ground. Yeah, it was a pancake. And that's a good that's a good pass block right there. I still don't like the kid step, but that was a good job blocking. Now I don't just, know if you noticed this, but he almost looks off balance at the end of this play, like right here. Yeah, he is. He's he's yeah. And then if he doesn't the guy slip. Slip, yeah. He had, he's just into the spin, but there's better ways to do it than what he went for there. I mean, that's a good job washing him down. His job there is to get the guy hooked inside so they could run it. But he opened up the cutback line out of that. It, it's fine. It's just not his main responsibility there. There's no depth on the chit step, and he just looks so awkward with his hands, too. His, his hand placement is not good. Chit step's not good. Oof. What is the what is the running back thinking there? Trying to toss the ball to the quarterback? <laughs> what, are you about to go down? Here, here, you take it. <laughs> what well, are you doing? <laughs> first off, let's discuss the blocking on this play, though, too, because I don't know if you saw exactly what happened there. Worst ends up almost on the ground, like three yards ahead of the play, blocking nobody yeah. when there's three guys yeah. in the backfield. Yeah, he didn't block anybody there. Four guys in the backfield. Back on the left side, I think. That was a nice block. He's got the strength to drive, guys. But hey, there we go. <laughs> he, he's got the strength to drive, guys. But he gets a little, little. Okay, on that play, he's he's already engaged with that end. Why leave that end to try to pick up that 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 backer? You're already engaged there. Stay there. He's the most dangerous threat to the quarterback. Why Why are you leaving to pick up this guy and allowing the free lane to the quarterback? To be fair, he probably shouldn't even be engaged with either of these guys if this is a screen and should be moving up, right? Well, it depends on the it depends on the type of screen. Like, because I know like my our offense, we have uh, we have two screens. Like, where one jo- one time you shoot the tackle. Your job is to high wall and just which basically just like pass for catch. And there's another one where you sell the run and then go try to seal the second guy inside the box. So it just depends on the play call. Uh, 
I would assume, based on what the left guard is doing, his job should probably be the go instead of fast blocking here. But you should never really know. Seem to get decent push. Yeah, yeah, he shows the ability to drive, guys. He's strong. He just gets like too far head over his knees and gets off balance a lot and just allows easy shedding. So, I don't I see, know if you noticed That was this. nice. That's a good block. I actually and thought he looked yes, a little is, high, though. Over. To Let's me, see. he looks a little bit high at this point where I haven't paused. Because the defensive lineman is yeah. being low and almost lifting yeah. him up a little bit. Yeah, he is kind of high there. I mean, he, you'd like to see him drop the hips more and head back and try to use more, like, hands. He kind of leads him with the head, which gets him off balance, one, and then he didn't even get that low either. It ends up being a nice block, but it's just off balance. And see, at the very end of, the pl of that play, you can see him, like, get shed and fall. I mean, it did some. It gets really off balance a lot with his head over his knees. team at some point though like we talked about we kind of have to see him take the uh, do you want to see him take the blitzer there the corner or do you want him to stay on that double team well it's so run play run play you're usually just responsible for the guys inside the box so that's not really his responsibility okay Nice push. He falls, but still provides a nice surge there for the QB. So Stand straight up and then shuffles, and it allows the inside gap open. Like there's no kick at there at all. It's literally just pops straight up. And he gives up the inside shoulder too. Yep, shuffled way too far out. I don't know what the thought process was there. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Another thing too that we have we don't really talk about a lot is how much. Uh, I, okay, keep in mind when we say this, this is Iowa's offense, so this might not be the end of the world. But how much help has he been getting from his tight ends? It seems like so often they're putting a tight end next to him. Does that have anything to do with lack of confidence? I would say it's more just Iowa's offense, which is they run a lot of tight ends, and it's just the design of the play, I would say. But it's always nice to have help on the uh, help of the tight end, no matter what, how good you are anyways. Because there aren't a lot of offenses left in the NFL where you're going to see a lot of guys playing next to your offensive tackles. So my yeah. point here, I guess, as I'm saying, is if he's getting so much help here, he won't be getting that when he gets to the NFL unless you're playing for the Lions or the Eagles or the Texans. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, and he needs it based on his pass sets with him turning too soon. That extra chip from the tight end would be critical. So, I mean. But I would say it's more just the design of their offense and then using tight ends a lot, especially when you had two really good ones like they did last year. And I assume they have a good tight end this year because they Prayer. always do. Yeah. I do like this fourth and one play, though. He doesn't get shoved and moving him out of the gap. With a touchdown. He's a pretty solid run blocker. I'll give him that, but the pass protection is... Absolutely terrible. So, now that you say that, actually, what would you think about him moving inside the guard? Do you think that would be an improvement, or do you think they yes. can see some regression there? 
guard, boot in the guard. Boom. You might actually get a solid player. He, based on what I've seen right now, I don't think you can succeed at tackle in the NFL. I actually don't really mind that play because of the route that they ran. Oh, yeah, that see, whole it did. line got blown up. Yeah, yeah, it's just he d allows the defenders into his chest. He has no first punch. He's the one that gets hit first instead of the opposite way. And yeah, basically the whole entire Mississippi State defense got through. It still got a touchdown on it somehow. So, I guess we'll start with, did we see any improvement from year to year? I think the answer is yes, but I'll let you explain as well. Yeah, I think that was a little bit. You saw improvement as a run blocker in that game. I also would be careful saying, like, year to year, I would also be aware that it's like Mississippi State with multiple NFL guys compared to Miami, sure. Ohio. But pass protection was, I guess... Slightly better. Still wasn't good, but I don't know. It couldn't really get any worse from that Mississippi State game. So, and it was a, I would say, average game run blocking. It was pretty decent. So, but yeah, that was a little bit better, which you, you would hope for since it's Miami, Ohio, compared to Mississippi State. Both games were left a lot to be desired. That's that was like day, that's like day three type tape right there. And okay, so this is going to be interesting. Where do we start? Anchor. So that would be basically like, I'm going to explain these, of course, as I mentioned at the top, this is our first offensive line video of the year. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain these kind of as we go. Anchor is basically how well can you hold your position on the line? Uh, do you get driven back into the pocket? Uh, do you get moved off your feet easily? Things like that. Uh, kind of self-explanatory, I guess. And, and we'll explain that too as we kind of go through film. Uh, we mentioned that term a few times already in this particular breakdown. Uh, I'm going to say seven. Do you think that's too high? I don't. I thought the anchor was pretty solid. Okay. That was one of his better areas. So, consider that my scale here, in terms of, like, 18 to early 19 tape until we see, like, a full year... Of 19, I'm only using 5 as my lowest for now, because 5 is like a UDFA grade, so I'm not yeah. giving below 5s. So with that being said, I'm going to go with a 5 for hand placement. Yep. I really need to see some improvement in that area. Um, didn't really get his hands inside where I want to see them. He didn't really get them into the chest where I want to see them. So it was kind of hard to point out exactly where like they need to be on broadcast cam but if I, I think it was, we did a pretty good job explaining why throughout the course of the video why that was not good footwork I'm gonna go with the six there we did see a little bit of footwork especially kind of in terms of getting outside um he did do a pretty decent job of, of dropping back, I guess. It was more so his angles that were an issue. We'll get into that in a minute. So I think I'm going to go with the six for footwork. Thoughts on that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Five or six for footwork, yeah. Okay, moving skills. So that would be, include for me, like, athleticism. Um, next, getting to the second level, things like that. Um, 
kind of different than footwork because footwork is how you like move your feet on the line. Movement skills is more so your overall agility and athleticism. I'm going to go, I don't want to give him a 10 there, so I'm going to go with a 9 until we see more. And of course, things like that will change too as we get to the combine. Agree? Uh, a little high for my liking. Probably more 8, maybe 7. He moves pretty well, but I don't, I don't know if I'd say 9. But Okay, fair enough. Strength, I actually am going to go a little high. I think that was a 10. And I think we kind of see that with his... Uh, like, actual hand clean wrestling. I think he has a background in strength, too. Yeah. So, I feel like Tang isn't exactly overreaching there. It might be a little high, but I think that's kind of fair. Yeah, he, he showed good strength. It's just him being able to maintain those blocks in the run game. He showed the ability to drive. He's, he's a strong dude. It's just everything else about him is not very good. Awareness. So... Awareness is also kind of the ability to recognize when they get to second level, um, but it's more so like recognizing blitzes, recognizing different formations uh, for centers, especially since I include all offensive linemen on this page. That'll include the ability to recognize mics, like identify mic linebackers, things like that. Ability to, uh, I guess, react. Reactions are also included in that. Uh, so even things like getting out of a, a stance kind of would include that false start. We saw like the false start that didn't get called earlier. That's awareness because awareness of when the ball is snapped, things like that. So I'm going to give him a six there. Again, that's day three for me at this point. Thoughts on that? Yeah, that's pretty fair. I would say five or six. Okay, so this one we haven't really talked about a lot yet. And I'll kind of let you kind of take me through the process of how I should identify this. But the difference between zone and man blocking. So, for example, you have a 350-pound offensive guard who, like Orlando Brown is a perfect example of this, right? Almost no athleticism, almost no movement skills coming out, things like that. He was more of a pure man guy. Whereas Zach Martin has the ability to run plays in both man and his own blocking schemes. So this is his ability to be not just a zone or not just a man blocker and be able to be, I guess, scheme fit for both or either scheme. So how do you think he did in that area? Um, in other words, I would, do you I would think say he has he, the potential to play in both schemes? I would say he's more of a man guy. Just to me... It seemed like when you wanted him to go to like a zone, like, like let's say like climb to a linebacker, get inside of a guy to seal the edge, he really struggled to do that. Uh, to me, if you just if you tell him to just like hey go hit that guy, I feel like he has a better chance of succeeding. So do you think a seven would be fair? So seven means he can succeed with some development in the other scheme. Yeah, I would say seven is good. Okay, so while I'm editing this, uh, okay, I'm just going to have to redo the whole thing. So this, the next thing is angles. So I think you can kind of tell where I'm going to end up going with that. Whoops. Yeah, yeah he, he took pretty poor angles to a lot of blocks. So that was the thing he didn't do very well. Yeah, so I'm going to go straight five there. That's the worst I'm giving right now. Seal and pull blocking. So he struggled to seal to me. He and we never saw him pull really, but he really struggled to seal guys. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning with the six there because I do think he has that potential uh, to develop, and he does have the athleticism to do it. I think we just never really got to see him finish blocks. And that'll kind of go under there, too, because, like, pull blocking is your ability to, like, get out of the, around the play and then finish with the pull block. And then seal blocking, kind of the same thing, like, making sure that you, once you win that position, kind of finishing that block and seeing engaged. So that kind of stuff is in that area, too. So I'm going to go with the six for now. And then miscellaneous is intangible. So that's, does he stay healthy? Uh... 
in terms of can he play both sides, will end up fitting in there for some guys. They'll get a bonus point there. Um, off the field issues is a big one, which we talked about at the beginning of the video for him. Not really a huge deal, I guess, since it only happened once, but still something to make a note of. Um, all that kind of stuff. So, I don't remember him having injuries, did he? Um, injuries, I don't, I don't know. Missed the game to the suspension, but didn't miss the game due to injury. So, for now, I, I, he wasn't named captain, though, it doesn't say either. So, I'm going to go with an 8 there for now. He does show the ability to play both sides, kind of, I guess. He at least has experience on both sides. Um, yeah. Doesn't have any extreme off the field issues, just the one OWI. Uh, one game is dysfunction, all that stuff. So I'm feeling okay about an 8 there. So I'm going to start with a 7. Uh, minus 2, minus 3. Uh, plus 2 is minus 1. Plus three is actually plus two. Uh, plus one. Minus one. Minus two. Minus one. So that's a 69 out of 100. In terms of grade for me. Which puts him... I believe right on the edge of day two to day three. So like an early fourth round pick. Do you think that's yeah, about right? I definitely want to take him before day three based on that film. So I, I, I understand the upside. So fourth round is solid, I guess. Yeah. Sweet. So uh, any other things that you wanted to bring up that we didn't discuss in terms of things that you were watching for, like grade-wise, that we didn't really get the chance to talk about that you want to make note of? No, I think we hit it all. Awesome. Alrighty guys, well, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned a thing or two especially, that was a big thing for us in this particular episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us for more on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, but most importantly, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube to check out more future content like this. Uh, for now, hopefully you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, peace out.